when I was in high school, I wanted to be a DJ. And why I wanted to be a DJ is because we used to have forums like this um, in school, and we used to have Kubamba coming. So they used to come to our school. We used to dance. Like Sunday used to be my best day in high school because of the way we used to dance. And then they could come with their cameras, videos, and now you're dancing and you appear on TV. So the next time when your parent comes, they say, I saw you on TV, da? Dancing. So when I finished school, I studied in Sunshine Secondary School. When I cleared, I had a B and I was okay with it. I mean, loved it. But I wanted to be a DJ, that's all. I didn't want any fancy thing. I don't know career, engineering, uh, architecture, uh -uh. DJ, simple. So I told my dad, I want to be a DJ. I need you to pay for me DJ school. Okay. So I went to K Crew offices. So I know I talked to my dad. My dad is like, uh, yes, we you can do DJing, of course. Entertainment uh, looks kind of good, uh, but I'll only pay for you DJing if you do gospel DJ. And I'm like, sour. As long as the major could mix. After that, I can uh, I can change path. As long as I have the skill. <laughs> the first idea was to get the, the skill. Okay. I went to K Crew offices, I met a very young DJ who was, I think, at that time he was 21. It's called DJ Jijo. And at that time he told me, yes, if you join us, you'll be the youngest DJ. And I'm like, yes, what a good way to start off from. So I'll be like, uh, even at the tagline, I'll be the youngest DJ in Kenya. You know those two lines, DJ Demakufu and DJ Who start with? So mine will be the youngest DJ in, in Kenya. So and that's where I wanted, and that's where I started off from. So when I went, they told me it's only 20,000. They did an interview for me. Of course, they have to ask me, are you religious? Da, 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 da. And maybe when I can share my high school story, I will be able to tell you how I even got to, I was very religious and I'm still very religious in terms of I believe in God. Um, so at that time, yes, they asked me questions. I shared my story and then they were, okay, Sawa, you can join us. So I go home very happy. Have you ever been happy in your life? Your dream is coming? True. If it was that iPhone, it's like you're getting that iPhone. So yes, I go home and tell my dad, it's only 20,000. It's like sour, we'll start. When I, when I joined high school, I joined in Sunshine. First year, I was a joker. You know a joker? We used to strike. The very first year in Sunshine, we striked, I think, thrice, if I'm not wrong. And so my dad was like, and it's me and my bro. We are paying very huge amounts of school fees. We're not from a privileged background in terms of resources. We were actually literally struggling to actually uh, pay those, uh, pay that school fees. So my dad tells us, you guys, I'm really sacrificing a, a lot to get you into these schools. But you guys, you're not repaying them, paying my efforts with, uh, with, the, with the grades you're getting. So me first year, I've gone, I meet uh, people who come from very wealthy backgrounds, and I kind of, what can I say? I messed around. So after December holiday, January has come, we want to join. And so my dad tells me, go and look for the, what do you call it? The school fees sheet. So that I go and pay school fees. Then me, I go and play, I hang out with my friends, come home late. My dad was like, you can't, you can't just be wasting my resources like that. I'm sacrificing a lot to pay these school fees. I tell you to look for this form just to give me the account number, I go and pay school fees. And then I pay and you back to school and you're not obeying. And that your grades are also not looking very nice. So he told me, I can't continue wasting my money with you. So he took me to some school remotely in Machakos. Yes, Machakos. I was admission number 25. Do you know what admission number 25 means? Who can guess? <laughs> I am the 25th person in that school. Actually, he opened a gazette. I'll call me Kasirika. So, I <laughs> was gazette that Sunday. I was to show my advertise you. So, it was very new. So, at that point, so he told me, you will go to this school. I mean, I wasn't believing. I'm from Sunshine, it's in Nairobi. I'm happy. And then you tell me, you're taking me to my chakos. It can never happen. So, my dad tells me, so for you to believe, let me, let me take you. So, that Sunday, he drops me and my family in church we were to open on Monday. Tells me I'm going to look for a school. He went to the Kamkoda. Records the school, takes very nice photos, tells me, this is the school that you're going to. It's only 20,000. I won't continue wasting my money uh, with you. If that's the life you've chosen, sour. Eh? So for one term, one term, I was taken to Machakos. Imagine. So I left my friends <laughs> in school. So I went, started a, new, uh, started a new journey. I'm in Machakos. 
Now, why we were to invite students is because it was a school full of rejects. By rejects, I mean from number one to number 24, all those people have a history. <laughs> you know, history. <laughs> so the head boy, to be very honest, the head boy had, be, had been arrested for three years. I'd been three years in jail for trafficking drugs. <laughs> so I stay there, and the only thing you can imagine, I don't have friends. I'm used to this life of Nairobi, Nini, and I can tell you for a fact it was really bad. It was traumatizing. I couldn't sleep at night. So what I used to do is only read. You get? The only friend you have is your books. <laughs> like literally. So I, I used to read, read, read. When I don't have sleep at night, I just go to the classroom, read, read, read. Uh, I became number one, first time. Uh, the second time, I became number one again. And I will get crazy grades, like crazy. So one day my dad comes for visiting, all the way to Machakos. Kwanzaa he comes late. What he doesn't know, I've prepared a speech. You see, like what Uhuru reads <laughs> when he's giving a State of the Nation address. So I prepared a speech. Every night when I used to go to my bed, I could literally, I'm a man, I don't cry in tears, I cry in my heart. <laughs> so I could cry <laughs> in my heart and say, how will I allow him to take me to such a place, rejects, Guys are smoking bang in the compound, doing this. For me, those things used to look, yeah, I, mean, I don't know, like it was so bad. So when he came, I removed my speech. Of course, it's on my mind, but I'm like so ready. So I tell him, and I started the, the lecture this way. So now you're even late. You take me to a school in Machakos, and then you're even late to come see your son. Clearly, to you, I am a reject. I am, you don't, that, I don't mean anything to you and stuff. So I gave him a lecture. I told him, tunakula mothokoi, tunafanya nini. In fact, you're the only one paying school fees in this school. All of them, I had prepared everything, you know. Kama wendo mzazi wangu yo time, ungenya mingia gari tuende ho. And that's what exactly happened. So my dad is like, okay then, we have to change your school. I gave him my midterm exams, told him, I've, I've been number one, go and look for a school. And, yeah. I didn't eat the food. I was visiting you in Jangga, I was in Chapo, I was in Mchele, Pilao, Kuku, I was in Kuku, but I was in Kuku. I was like, easy food, two dinners in Nairobi. Let me get used to what you made me get used to. Okay? So during midterm, my dad was like, it's very hard to get a school. Because uh, you're on midterm break, most people, it will be very hard to, for them to take you. But I can look for a school very comfortably once you're away from... Uh, once you're home, for at least for the four weeks, I can try and get a school, okay? So I decided I'll stay. Now, when I stayed there, <coughs> this is an interesting story. Uh, about 10 people, let's say 10, I can't remember the exact number, 10 people were suspended. And not suspended, expelled, because of trafficking, drugs in school. Now they were busted. You know me, I used to see them. But now they have been busted. Now how many are we? <laughs> yes, you can imagine. Now, I was given two prefects positions. They were prefects, by the way. <laughs> so I, was the, I was the boarding captain, <laughs> and I was the CU chairman at the same time. Okay, now let's pause for a minute. I'm CU chairman. You know what CU chairman means? You need to have your path, you know, <laughs> like really set. So yeah, I was made CU chairman. I stayed there for one term, and that was my turning point at, at high school level. Because at that point, that's when I realized you don't take... Uh, don't take things for granted. My dad had taught me a way of never take things for granted. And at that point, I, I told him, Be there, Dad, uh, this one, one term that you've given me in this school, I've learned a lot. So, your punishment, it may work. But please, get me out of here. I can't dig a hotter, you know. So, <laughs> after one term, we look for a school, we look for a school. And uh, what happened? Uh, I told, so my dad just one day is like, uh, Ama, you'll go back to Sunshine. Hey, 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 hey. Should have seen that smile. <laughs> <laughs> eh? So I told him, yes, if they accept me, sour. So I went back to school, and uh, my dad asked the deputy, I think that time it was the deputy headmaster, 
charge of academics, asked him, Can I had two children here. I want to bring one back. And because he, he used a very silly excuse, because of the strikes, I decided to get them off. But it wasn't because of the strikes. It was because So uh, the, the deputy principal told him one statement, bring my son back. And they went back. And it was very weird. Going back to your class, after one time, you've not been with them. They're like, where did you run away to? Then you come, you start shining, you know. <laughs> They're like, you know, Sanchez, after striking three, three times that year, we were very behind in our syllabus. I remember you used to study Form 1 things, <laughs> well, still in Form 2, if you remember Marty and Cousin. Eh? So it used to be very interesting for us. So now me, we've covered all this. I was reading even ahead. I'm good. So I remember the first time I used to do well in my class and that kind of stuff, as compared to what I used to do. Uh, before, or how it used to be before. And at that point, that's when I started now realizing that there's more to life than just uh, messing around, okay? At that point, now I started now seeing a bigger picture, a bigger vision, and that's how I even decided now to be saved, that kind of stuff. Because now I've been put in a position where I'm a CU chairman. After that, now you have to act like a CU chairman, literally. So that's the point at which I had my greatest turning point. I gave my life to Christ. And since then, everything has just uh, fallen into place. Mm -hmm.